somebody ring the dinner bell because it's time for dinner. Thanks for tuning in once again to another week of What's For Dinner. I'm going to show you four delicious meals that we had. I've got quite a variety today. All were delicious and I will make again. So I hope you enjoy this video and get some ideas, maybe some things you can add to your dinner rotation to keep things fun and exciting at dinner time. With that being said, let's just jump on into the video and we're going to get started with a brand new recipe that probably was our very favorite of the week. For tonight's dinner, these are our ingredients. Let me show you here what we've got to make a creamy Cajun shrimp and sausage. We are using the raw Argentinian red shrimp from Trader Joe's. We talk about this a lot because they are really awesome. We are using this Oscar Mayer hardwood smoked uncured turkey sausage. We have a green bell pepper some green onions out of our garden. We have some Pecorino Romano garlic. This is what I'm gonna be using to make the chicken broth that the recipe calls for. Cajun seasoning, parsley flakes, salt, pepper, butter, and some heavy whipping cream. And I think I'm gonna use some olive oil in the pan. This is what we are going to use to make this recipe. It looks amazing. My husband James found this recipe online. It's new to us and we're gonna get started. Okay, my shrimp, sausages, and olive oil are all in the bowl. A pound of shrimp, I think it was a pound or 12 ounces or so of the sausage, two tablespoons of olive oil, and now I'm gonna be adding in two tablespoons of my Cajun seasoning. and I toss this to coat it. My pan is already heating up on the stove, so it'll be nice and hot when this goes in. All right, that looks good. Now I'm gonna put this in the skillet. Okay, this is cooked for five minutes. I'm going to spoon these out into a bowl so I can keep my juices. And to that, I'm gonna add butter and I'm gonna start working on my vegetables. about a teaspoon of my dry chicken base to a third cup of water. And that's going in. This needs to reduce down just a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna start working on my wedge of Pecorino Romano. It is from Trader Joe's, and it says it's an Italian Pecorino Romano 100% sheep's milk cheese. It's very strong smelling and pretty strong tasting but it's perfect for this kind of a recipe. So it calls for one half a cup. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and 
just do a little more. I know that's a half a cup, but a little more for topping I think will be good. This has reduced down, and the recipe calls for one and three-fourths cup of heavy cream. There's one cup. And there's the additional three-fourths cup. And give this a stir. Well, the recipe called for just a regular yellow onion, but we have a lot of green onions coming out of our garden right now. So I am using those. It also called for a red pepper instead of a green, but green is what I had. So that's what I went with. At this point, it says to taste to see if you need to add salt. So I'm gonna taste now. No, it doesn't need any salt. I am going to add black pepper, and let me just say, this tastes amazing. So it says to cook this on low for just a couple of minutes. The, salts, the sauce will start to thicken. Then you'll add in your cheese and give it another minute or so just for the cheese to melt. Then you add back in your meat. Okay, and my half cup of cheese going in. I'm not gonna measure. I'm just gonna sprinkle in a handful and a smidge more. Just leave a little bit for the topping. Let's give that a stir. And let the cheese melt a little bit before we put in the meat. All right, and end with the meat. Okay, smoked sausage and shrimp have now been added. I just give those a stir. This is on my lowest heat setting. You could probably even just turn it off and put on a lid, and I may do that. I've cooked up some broccoli on the side, and I also cooked up some bow tie pasta. And that is finishing up, so I don't think I'm going to put the lid on. I think I'm just going to let it sit here for maybe another minute and then turn off the heat. And just for a final touch, I'm going to squeeze over a wedge of lemon just to give it some freshness and brightness. This recipe was so good and I am very glad James found this. We will definitely make this again and um, the sauce was just perfectly creamy. It was just the right taste to balance out the shrimp and the sausages and the vegetables, the cheese. It really, really was a well-balanced dish. We served some broccoli on the side of my bowl and it was a very filling meal that we can't wait to have again. All right, and for tonight's dinner, we decided on some Salisbury steak. I bought this pound of ground beef from Aldi. I wanted to try this, and it was really, really good. Um, of course, it was very seasoned with all of the ingredients for the Salisbury steak, but we did like it, and I will purchase that again. 
Um, so yeah, for our Salisbury steak, I just, I don't have a tried and true recipe that I follow. I just found one, I think, on allrecipes.com. I'll have it linked below. Um, it called for a can of French onion soup, which I did not have. So I'm going to use this au jus gravy packet and just mix it with the water. I have the beef broth sitting there, the broth base. I did not end up needing that. Um, and the other ingredients are either for the beef or for the gravy. So I'm going to show you how I put this together. And mixed into the ground beef are breadcrumbs, one egg, salt and pepper, and about a third of the, a third cup of the um, au jus gravy, or if you're following the recipe to a tea, the um, French onion soup. I made those into patties and I got five really nice size ones out of the one pound package. I am browning those up. I'll remove those from the pan once they're browned up, take out any grease or drippings that are there, and then I'm gonna get started on the gravy in the pan. Okay, to the couple tablespoons of flour that I put in my pan, I am adding in the remainder of the au jus gravy mix with the water and the ketchup and the dry mustard. I'm just going to whisk that together to make it a smooth, very delicious tasting gravy. All right, and since I've never made this recipe before, I'm giving a little taste to the sauce and I am adding more water. It tastes a little too heavy of a ketchup taste, which we love ketchup, but I just feel like maybe it was too much ketchup and that could be me. I maybe just squirted an extra tablespoon too many. I didn't really measure, so it was very, very good, but I definitely would scale back on the ketchup the next time. I think I was looking for more of just a ground brown gravy type of taste but like I said it was really really good we enjoyed it we ate on it for dinner and then the next day for lunch there was plenty for the both of us this was served very traditionally with corn and mashed potatoes look for the recipe below here is a super simple supper idea smoked sausage in any form is a quick meal on the table and so it's great to keep any time of year but summertime they're great to have. It just seems like summer is busier and you just want something a little quicker to get on the table. So, James picked this up. Let me show you the package. This is the brand, Kielbasa Smoked Meats. I've never seen this one before. Um, it's a beef smoked sausage, fully cooked, a lot of protein. And um, so yeah, that's the back of it, the Kielbasa family. Yeah, so uh, he picked this up at Meyer, and um, this is his request for tonight. Every now and then you have one of those nights, it's like eat leftovers, eat whatever you want, that kind of thing. We um, have had some evening work tonight, some things in the garden that needed to be done, and around the outside of the house, so tonight was our night of eat whatever. So, I'm going to have leftovers, and he wanted these sausages, and he said, Cook up as much onions as you can fit in the pan. So I had one green pepper and I have plenty of onions so I piled them in there and then in a few minutes I'm gonna put I've got a handful of cherry tomatoes he wanted those in there as well and he's having a low carb meal tonight he doesn't want anything else so he'll probably have a couple of these with some of the veggies and um, yeah so these are great in the crock pot um, you can throw these in the crock pot and put in a jar of say marinara and serve these on buns um, or serve it over pasta, or sheet pan meals, grill, so many things you can do with smoked sausage. So this is what we've got cooking up tonight. Okay, I'm gonna sprinkle in some of the Zatarain's garlic and herb seasoning. There we go, and so towards the end, 
Um, this is frying in olive oil. I will add in probably just a little bit of butter, a couple tablespoons right towards the end. I fried these first before I put in the sausages and then I added some water and it's kind of steaming now. I'm gonna put a lid on and it shouldn't take real, real long. All right, and here we are just about finished. I'm not gonna show these plated up because it's basically gonna look like this on a plate. Um, they, the sausages grew in size like a bunch and they even split open a little bit. Threw in just the few cherry tomatoes I had and then James put a little spin on it and he wanted some salsa verde added in there. So his meal, he can have it however he wants it. So that's gonna probably give it a good little kick as well. So see, that's another idea, who knew? So, yep, this is what James is having for dinner tonight. All right, and for this last meal, you are looking at the best tasting rice I have ever made from scratch. It was amazing. I'm so glad I found the recipe. It's called lemon butter rice, and here's how I made it. It called for celery and onion. Um, diced pretty fine. I got that done and now I'm just adding butter to my saucepan and once that melts I'm gonna start sauteing the vegetables. And there's just something about a recipe that calls for lemon zest. Just the whole act of zesting the lemon just makes you know that there is something special about to happen in a dish. That's how I feel anyway. So this called for the zest of half a lemon, I believe, is how it was worded. Maybe not. It may have said a specific amount. But I will, of course, have the recipe linked down below. But after I zested my lemon and cut off the part that I zested, um, because that also is used in the recipe, the lemon juice, I am going to add in my basmati rice to my saucepan and let that saute for just a second. I'm adding in the dry chicken base that will make up my chicken broth after this water is added to it. I'm gonna let that simmer for just a little while. And in with the freshly squeezed lemon juice. Now adding in the lemon zest and the rice will just do its cooking process as I begin working on the fish. And now for the fish. We are using this Mahi Mahi from Trader Joe's. I've made this on my channel many times. Uh, we love this. I just follow the directions on the back of the package um, for the pan frying. That's what I'm going to do this time. I'm going to do it really simple and it takes just a quick amount of time. I'm just going to add a little bit of Old Bay and some parsley and this literally takes about five or six minutes per side and you have your fish completed. Another thing about these little inserts on the packages on the flip side, there's all kind of interesting things, uh, recipes and then other ways that you can prepare this fish. So I like that about the packaging on these Trader Joe's and fish products. All right, so there goes the old bay and the parsley, and we're gonna do a quick check on the rice. And I used my same little microplane that I did my zesting on my lemon to get some really finely grated Pecorino Romano cheese. That's gonna go in the rice and a little over the fish and the broccoli. And there we've added the cheese to the rice, just had the lid on that so that can start melting down. And then I reserved back just a little bit of my lemon zest to add to the fish. 
I just popped my lid on, turned the heat off, and just left that over the top until we were ready to plate up. We both loved this meal so much. We wouldn't mind having this once a week. It was very light, bright, refreshing, and very low calorie. All right, guys, that wraps up another week of What's for Dinner. I hope you found some inspiration. If you like these What's for Dinner videos, give this a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Come on back next week. We'll do it all over again. Bye, guys.